I have personally analyzed the technique of over 300 athletes and today I'm gonna to point out some of the biggest mistakes that I have seen. Mistake number one is overextending. This simply happens when the athlete is upright and it kills their speed because their foot takes longer to recover. And it can put excessive forces on the hips, causing pain to the joints and muscles surrounding it. These are the three main things that occur when a person overextends. One, the foot spends too much time on the ground. Two, the foot spends too much time behind the hips. And three, the weight is loaded on one leg while the knee is still behind the body. Here are two reasons why this could be happening. One, the person is trying to fully extend at the knee. Full extension is something that gets overemphasized, especially in sprinting. When Olympic sprinters are at or near top speed, you won't see them fully extend at the knee. They naturally keep a slight bend so that they can recover the leg faster. Two, the athlete could have really poor elasticity because they haven't trained their tendons. When trained properly, your tendons are like powerful springs. They store and release lots of energy. If this is underdeveloped, then you'll have longer ground contact times. One way to fix this mistake is through wicked drills. I will say this, there's a fine line between pushing too much and not pushing enough, which leads us to the next mistake. Mistake number two is tapping on the ground. This typically happens when a person lifts their foot early off the ground and it kills their speed because they aren't putting down enough force to increase their stride length. And their foot wastes time in the air because they are trying too hard to keep their knees up. There are two main things that occur when a person is tapping the ground. One, the moment the rear foot comes off the ground, the front foot makes contact which means the athlete isn't spending enough time in the air traveling forward between each stride. Two, the arms do not get a full range of motion, which also cuts their stride short. Here are two reasons why this might happen. One, the athlete lacks power. In order to push off and have your body travel through the air, you need power. It seems obvious, but this is common, especially among athletes who haven't spent enough time developing their strength. Dr. Peter Wayne states that to run faster, we just need to put more force into the ground. This is why Usain Bolt takes less strides than everyone on the field, yet still comes in first place and smashes records because he's applying forces of up to five times his body weight into the ground. Two, the athlete could just have really bad mobility. If we look at elite athletes sprinting, there's a lot of mobility required to get into these positions, including hip flexor mobility, quad mobility, and even shoulder mobility. Remove any of these three and your stride length could suffer just from the fact that you aren't able to even get into necessary positions to push powerfully. Everyone wants to do the fancy stuff, the sled work, the flies, the bounce, but we can't ignore the fundamentals that allow us to do the fancy stuff. Three, the athlete has worked with a coach who's told them to keep their knees up. Focusing on picking up your knees is one of the worst cues in existence for speed. It's not their fault. When coaches say this, they're trying to create a domino effect. You artificially raise the knees so you have more space to strike the ground, which pushes you further and faster on each step. However, I've learned from guys with more sprinting expertise, such as Tom Telez and Dr. Peter Wayan, that instead we want to think about putting more force into the ground by doing so we create what i call a sprinting flywheel you hit the ground harder this pushes you further and faster since your knees coming up higher naturally you continue to hit the ground harder and the cycle continues making the switch from picking the knees up to hitting the ground is one of the hardest things to learn you have to be able to control your legs in the air to travel down proactively while your entire body is moving forwards at high speeds this requires a level of mind to muscle connection that is often over overlooked and underdeveloped, but it can be easy when you know what to do. Here's James, a 63 year old master sprinter who runs faster than his 21 year old son. He's been making this mistake his entire life. His coaches have always told him to pick his knees up, but deep down, he knew something wasn't right. This is him after five minutes of us working together on his foot strike. If you've never done this before, it will feel like you're truly sprinting for the first time. One way to work on this is by practicing your ability to do what I call the slice. You want to imagine your foot is a blade that's gonna slice the ground under you in half. If we look at the fastest humans, they are masters at slicing, which allows them to contact the ground powerfully and create a natural stride. What's crazy is the last time I made a video about sprint mistakes, I was talking about the ones I was making and now I'm coaching athletes from around the world, which I'm super grateful for, but I can only coach a limited amount of people at a time and not everyone can afford it, which is why I'm launching my first digital course, the Sprint cheat codes. These are the exact cheat codes I figured out about fixing sprint technique and improving your speed after helping over one thousand athletes run faster. After you finish watching this video, you can click the link in the description to learn more. Mistake number three, popping up too fast. It looks like this. An athlete begins with their sprint and quickly becomes upright. According to science, the fastest athletes are able to apply lots of horizontal forces 
in the acceleration. If you pop out fast, you severely limit your acceleration. Instead, we want a gradual transition. There are two main reasons why it's hard to transition effectively. One is we don't have enough power to stay in that position. Some try to force it by tucking their head or bending over at the waist, but what matters is how your feet and legs contact the ground. Two is we don't have the technique required to stay in that position. Transitioning is a highly technical skill that requires lots of precision. There's a couple of different ways I work with athletes on this. One thing you can easily try out is being more mindful of where your eyes are on the field. The body follows the eyes. Look at this example. As they become upright, their line of sight gradually rises. This is something we can work on when we sprint. Practice gradually bringing up your line of sight like this, from under you to slightly ahead to further ahead until you're looking straight down the field, instead of under to straight down the field. Mistake number four is cycling out of the star instead of stabbing. This applies to block starts, three-point starts, and even side starts. What I mean by cycling is the legs are moving as if you're riding a bike. The problem with cycling out of your start is that the foot spends too much time in the air for you to build speed efficiently and it hits the ground at an angle that can actually slow you down. Instead, we want the legs to stab into the ground. Specifically, during the first few steps, we want the legs to move like this. This is what you'll see from the fastest starters in the world and it's what we need during the early acceleration. Most people aren't able to stab the ground. If you can do that, you're already 90% ahead of most athletes. Then you can worry about the details like your stride length, stride frequency, and decreasing ground contact times. Here's an athlete that before was cycling out of his start. Then after teaching him a simple progression, he's able to stab the ground on a standing start and is working on doing it for his block start. This is a very simple drill to get started with. Set three pieces of tape and use them as a mental cue for where to strike like the 2019 world champion is doing right here. By the way, every order of the sprint cheat codes comes with a get fast no matter what guarantee, which means if you complete the entire course and see zero results, I will personally coach you. That's how confident I am in this course. You can click down below now to learn more. Mistake number five, neglecting the FV curve. I work with a few athletes who run sub 11. I have an interview with one of them on my site. Another one, he has a personal best of 10.27. And I asked him, what's one of the most valuable things he's learned from me? He specifically pointed to learning about the force velocity curve and creating a force velocity profile. Depending on where along the FV curve you train, you're gonna roughly improve different parts of your acceleration. Essentially, it represents the relationship between strength and speed, which includes max strength, strength speed, power, speed strength, and max speed. For example, if you want to improve your start, then you need to work on your maximum horizontal strength. If you want to improve your top speed, then you need to spend more time training at high velocities. Once you begin to look at training this way, training becomes less blurry and more straightforward. If you're curious to learn more about the force velocity curves in relation to sprint, you can look at J.B. Morin's work, a PhD and leading researcher in the science of speed. Mistake number six is a lack of eccentric training. The portion of a lift when you are lengthening the muscle while it's loaded with weight. This is how you get stronger for sprinting and reduce injuries. Based on science, eccentric training is the most effective way to develop strength, even more than concentric training. It also serves an important factor in keeping you safe from injury. According to science, one of the highest risks of injury occurs during in the late swing phase when the hamstring is rapidly lengthening to control the legs. And if that strength isn't there, your body becomes vulnerable. That's where eccentric training comes in. The less strains and injuries you experience, the more you can spend time training and getting faster. By now, Nordic curls are fairly popular, but it's important not to neglect eccentrics for the knees either. One exercise that you can do even from home are eccentric Bulgarian lunges with your heels off the ground. This closely resembles the stress that your legs undergo in the early acceleration. Bend legs majority of the weight loaded on the hips and quads and your heels are ideally off the ground. Only thing missing is the horizontal forces. Other than that, it's very specific to early acceleration and requires no equipment. What you've learned in this video is only a sample of what's inside the course. So if you're really serious about fixing your technique and running faster, click down below in the description. And if you want to see more basic sprint mistakes, check out the OG video right here.